Well, hello, YouTubers. This is David Holmgren, K9RUF. And I thought it'd be a good idea to make a video about RT Systems. Uh, the company has many wonderful videos that they use to explain things, but I thought it'd be interesting to do a um, video from my perspective as a user of uh, RT Systems and some of the things that I've learned having used it for many years and having many RT Systems programs. So I call the presentation simply the best and really it's because it really is the best and because it actually is very simple to use and very powerful too. So uh, this is a presentation on RT Systems, simply the best. So, as an introduction, um, how many people have heard of RT Systems? Do you know what RT Systems is? <laughs> um, and uh, how many people out there are using it? Quite a few, I imagine. If you're watching this, you may have never heard of it, but if you're a ham operator, you probably know it very well. Um, and as a RT System user, wonder how many RT System programs you actually own. Um, I own probably about 8 to 10, I think, if you count them all. Uh, I've had over the years, and uh, they are really, really nice, and I'll show you why in this presentation. Well, I'm kind of a history buff, and I kind of like to explain and uh, chronicle uh, the origins of organizations, and I always get a kick out of how they start from uh, humble beginnings and become, uh, you know, great companies like this one, and uh, this company started 22 years ago. Uh, they... Um, recognize that with the Yesu FT11, that little HT off on the right there, uh, they were able to clone one FT11 to another FT11. And I think they thought, well, that'd be pretty cool if we could write that information to a computer and then maybe even get the settings that are inside it uh, and save it and then maybe even be able to write things back to the radio. So that's how they started. And, uh, you know, they haven't been resting on their laurels, that's for sure. Uh, they've got uh, 334 radios to their credit, which is amazing. Um, a lot of these you'll have heard of, uh, Elenco, Yesu, Kenwood, Icom, but there's a lot of ones in here I've never even heard of. <laughs> but I'm sure the people that have uh, these radios really appreciate the fact that RT Systems took the time to uh, develop software for them. So uh, just as a big overview, so you can see the forest through the trees, uh, as far as the products that they actually sell, uh, as I've alluded, they sell programming software and the cables that go with the software. Um, I got the picture of the cables from their website. I thought that was kind of colorful and kind of descriptive at the same time, just describing all the different cables that are available for all the different radios that they have to hook up to. So as you can see, there's a lot of engineering and development time that they put into making all these radios connect. Uh, they also sell standard computer cables like HDMI, serial, and USB cables. And then finally, they sell something I didn't know. Uh, they actually sell uh, specialized cables. Um, if you buy a ham radio, oftentimes you'll see a multi-pin connector in the back. And uh, it's maybe 10 or 12 or 14 pins. And gosh, you know, that's a lot of pins to try to solder a little tiny wire onto. I suppose I should stop using that Weller 300 watt soldering iron, I guess, but no kidding. Um, but it, anyways, they, they sell the uh, connector with the cable already attached, and then on the other end of the cable are bare wires. And so you can attach it to the other end, whether it's a computer or something else. So I thought that was kind of cool. They sell these uh, connector cables. So, you know, why would I want to use RT system software? I mean, really, what's the purpose of it? Well, it's to create and maintain a list of all those frequencies that get stored in the radio as memory channels. And uh, I know I have a friend who says that, you know, you're not a real ham unless you understand how to run your radio uh, without using programming software. And, you know, while I probably agree with him, it's probably a, a nice thing to be able to uh, say that, you know, I can enter a memory channel uh, right from... The radio, but I tell you what, once you do one or two of those, you go, Ugh, give me the programming software. <laughs> and so that's that's one of the main functions. And um, 
Uh, you know, a lot of times I think we th recognize that this software is great for the uh, VHF and UHF mobiles that we run around with, or HTs. But, you know, think beyond that. Think about using them for your HF radios, too, because they do make a software for the HF radios. And, you know, some of these HF radios, in fact, all the new ones, have channels as well. And, you know, while there's a VFO and we're usually tuning manually, um, sometimes it's nice to put a frequency in there as a channel. Um, but then also to the third point, it will allow you to back up all the settings that you like to have for your radio. Uh, let's say you bought a Yesu radio and it, you know, the default color is green and you'd rather have it be purple. And, you know, it's just one of those things you customize. So as you customize your radio and you want to make it just the way you want it, um, you can save all those settings so that they're there. And you think, well, why would you want to do that? Well, you know, there's firmware updates. Fortunately, these radios, they offer new firmware as it comes along and makes the radio better and maybe they fix a bug or two or, or maybe enhance the radio, which is great from the old days when, you know, radios were just, you know, capacitors and resistors soldered together and the radio you bought is a radio you kept for the rest of your life and never changed. Um, but so when they do offer these firmware updates, uh, not all the time, but sometimes the uh, radio will default back to its original settings and then you will have lost all your original um, or your uh, settings that you had created. And so consequently, you got to start over. So it'll back up all the settings in the radio. I think that's really key in being able to do that. So the R2 systems really is uh, software is comprised of uh, two main components, <clears throat> the uh, software and the cable. Now, uh, originally, they offered the software on CD, and you could order from them as a CD, or let's say you're at HRO and you just bought that brand new ICOM, I don't know, IC7610, the one I'm looking at, <laughs> and um, uh, they have the disc there, and you could buy it right there. Well, uh, they also now, since uh, putting, buying CDs is kind of so 1990s, uh, uh, they could actually uh, sell the software to you as a software download. So um, in any event, uh, if you get it as a CD or as you download, make sure you hang on to that serial number. And the serial number will be part of the CD jacket that comes with the uh, CD. And then if it's a download, then it'll come as an email. So, And then when you get that email, hang on to that email, because, not only because it has that serial number, but you can also use it when you enter the serial number when you install the software, simply by copying the serial number using the copy and paste method on a computer, and then just paste it right into the little window for the serial number when they ask you to enter it. Okay, now, next thing is the cables. Well, some of the cables are uh, proprietary, and that's basically because that's what the manufacturer provides as a connection. Um, case in point, uh, there's a three conductor, uh, 2.5 millimeter connector that's used on the ICOM products, and um, uh, that's something that you know, you're not going to find at a computer store. And if that's the case, then you need to buy the software with the um, uh, cable. Now, some of the radios, like I've got an Ayesu 991, and that uses a standard USB AB connector and uh, cable. And so using that, you don't have to buy the cable because uh, you already have the cable. So you got to kind of look and see what you have. Um, now, if you have, let's say, more than one ICOM radio that uses that same connector, you don't have to keep buying the cable. You just buy the cable once and you can use it for all your ICOM radios. So the first uh, product will cost you like fifty dollars um, for the cable and the software. Then, if you want to uh, buy other ICOM software, it's just another twenty-five dollars for each one of the individual radios. Now, um, as far as cables, um, uh, like I mentioned, the USB is another um, cable, and that one, if you have them in your drawer, you know they might work. And the reason I say might is uh, you got to be careful. Some of the uh, smaller cables, the micro and mini. Uh, USB cables don't always pass data. And you say, well, what would you ever use that cable for then? Well, a lot of times <laughs> manufacturers will make a USB cable just to charge a phone or a device, and they won't actually have all the cables or all the wires inside the cable to pass data. So you want to make sure it's a, um, a, a full wired uh, USB cable. And um, I, I thought I had some defective USB cables and come to find out they just weren't wired for data. They're just wired for charging devices. So pay close attention to that. Now, the other thing um, that you could use to uh, transfer data besides a cable is an SD card. And uh, they have a uh, 
the ability in the software uh, for it radios that support SD cards to be able to write the information for the file to an SD card and then you take it out of the computer where it was written and put it into the radio and then you'll read the settings off the SD card and, uh, and vice versa. So uh, Yesu is a good example of that. The FTM 100 and 400 uh, use the SD card and they also use a cable too. So if you want to use the cable you can use that as well. So once again, covering costs, uh, it's either $25 for just the software, or if you get the software and the cable, it's like $50. So just as an example, I, I took some pictures of some of the cables that I have, and I'll kind of show you those in uh, the next few slides. So the cable that's yellow on the bottom, that is a Yesu cable. The orange one is an ICOM cable. The gray cable is a Kenwood cable, and the white cable is another Kenwood cable for a different Kenwood radio. This is the Yesu connector. If you take a close look at it, it kind of looks like a mini DV, but it's got a couple of humps on it. It's just a little bit different. This is the ICOM 2.5 millimeter enlarged. <laughs> it's very big here. Um, but this is, it looks like you go, oh, I have that connector. Well, probably not. This is not a 3.5, which is what you're familiar with for audio. This is a 2.5, so it's a little bit smaller. Um, this is a multi pin Kenwood connector for the TMV71 and TMD710. Uh, so one cable, once again, works for two radios. And this is the 9-pin or DB9 connector that's used to connect up to a Kenwood TS-2000. Uh, and just for a point of reference, just so I talk to you about uh, USB cables here, this is the uh, standard cable that you use for printers, um, the uh, AB USB cable, the A and the B connector. We've been using this one for years. Uh, and then along came the mini USB and it looks a little bit, it's, I mean, it's a lot smaller than the other one, but it's got like a little crown on it. Pay attention to that. And this is the uh, USB micro connector. And you're saying, well, they're almost the same. Well, they're different. And I'll put them side by side so you can kind of see the uh, mini over here and then the uh, um, uh, micro off to the right here. So now, um, let's talk about installing the software. Uh, the software will run natively on a Windows machine, but for those people like myself that use a Mac, you can also run it on a Mac with emulation software, uh, such as uh, Parallels or VMware. Um, what's really nice about RT systems is they really take the guesswork out of uh, loading USB drivers. Oftentimes, um, a manufacturer will not provide the drivers and they'll tell you like go to prolific or someplace and go get it and you got to make sure you get it for the right computer 32 bit 64 whatever you have you got to figure that out and then you got to make sure you select the right operating system and you know sometimes when we're in a hurry maybe we grab the wrong thing and then we have to uninstall it uh, because it won't work and <laughs> anyway so they give you the right drivers right as part of the installation of the program so when you run the program it runs right away for the first time which is great so first time you run the program it'll ask you for that license key and as i mentioned if you got it as an email uh, the uh, serial number you just uh, do a copy and paste into the license key field and then next i uh, select the language they sell these all around the world now and uh, then they'll ask if you want to add a shortcut to the desktop. And you can go ahead and decide if you want to do that. And then the last thing they, they make you do as you start to run the software is they force you to read the radio. And at first I was kind of like, hmm, why do they do that? Because I want to just get going. I want to just start plugging things in and start writing it to the radio. Well, how about this? How about if you've had the radio for maybe a couple months, you've already got things set up the way you like them. You may even have some channels plugged in there. Uh, and if you create your own list and then write it to the radio, you're going to zap everything you've done. So they force you to read the radio. So that way you're going to start from what you've already done or may have done. And then you can build on that. So uh, they do a great job kind of thinking about the whole process. And that's why they make you read the radio for the first time. So let's do the demo. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on a, a program. This is the... Um, ICOM programmer uh, for RT systems. And 
me just bring that up here. You can put this as a shortcut. I just haven't done that yet on this particular programmer. So I'll pick Icon Programmer, and they're really nice as far as organizing. They'll put them all together for you. Oop. Let's see, i got to click on the right thing there. There we are. Okay, so I'll click on the 51, ID 51. So I click on that, and now it'll bring up the program. And uh, so you get a window with some uh, values that are just kind of sitting there. Now, uh, the first thing I always recommend is that you should um, look for updates. Uh, check for updates within the RT systems because they are constantly making the program better with firmware updates. Or not firmware, but software updates. So uh, you pick help right there. And then you go check for updates. And we'll see if there's any updates. First thing it asks you, do you want to do that? And I'll say sure. And oh yeah, lo and behold, look, there's updates. Now pay close attention. This is kind of nice what they do. If there's other similar software uh, in that same family, uh, they'll also update those at the same time. So since I also have the IC7100 and the 31, it'll do that besides the 51 versions of the software. So they kind of make it easy for you. So you just do one software update and then you're done. So I click update and it says that I'm supposed to close the programmer. And the reason they do that is the program needs to be dormant in order to use it or to do the update. It's kind of like if you ever use Office 365, they make you do the same thing. So I just got to go up here. I got to hit this first. And now when I close the program, it won't get rid of the update program. That'll keep on running. And so I'll close that, and it'll sit there in the background. So now I'll click on Update, and you can see the little bars go across real fast. It's a real quick process, and then eventually it'll finish, and uh, everything will be updated. Okay, and it comes up and says the updates have been completed. So then we go back here, and then I'll go down to my ICOM programming software here. And right like this, and pick the 51. Okay, and then I'll just double check, make sure everything is done and updated. I have a ham radio breakfast I need to go to tomorrow. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I'll go up to help here and check for updates one more time, and it'll run the updater. And this time it should come up and say yes, all the files are up to date, so we are good to go. Okay, so now at this point, you would start saying, well, okay, I'll just start putting in frequencies. Like I have a repeater that's over in McHenry. It's a 145.41. And then it automatically knows that it's a uh, in that part of the band, so it's going to be a minus 600. It automatically sets the transmit uh, frequency, minus 600, duplex, FM. Um, this particular... Uh, repeater uh, is called McHenry, so I'll call it that, M-C-H-E-N-R-Y. And then I'll also give it the tone that it requires in order to function. Uh, this particular repeater uses 114 for the tone. And then you can go on and set other things uh, if you want to have it. Uh, you've got other little um, things down on the, on the right here. I can scroll across and show you. Now, um, these things right here would pertain to um, D-Star, so I'm not going to do anything with those because they uh, are not relevant for this repeater because this is an analog repeater. Okay, so then you start typing in the next one, and you go, oh my gosh, this is going to take forever. I got a whole bunch of repeaters. Well, they make it really easy for you, so fear not. I'm going to show you probably the coolest part of RT systems. And what that is, is they actually have connectivity to external data sources. So I'm going to go File, External Data, and then if you have the old CD for uh, ARL or a new one, whatever, um, you can connect up from that database. Um, you could go to Radio Reference, but that was, uh, uh, means that you have to have a subscription. I don't have a subscription. So we're going to go to Repeater Book. We'll use this one here. And so then 
what it asks for is your location. And in this case, I'm going to see that that's, that's where I'm at, which is Ingleside. I picked that out from my computer. Uh, but you could put in whatever you want. You can put in a town. You can put in a zip code, whatever. And then it asks you for the radius. Now, um, the radius from your location will determine how many channels will actually get loaded. So the further out you go, the more channels that will get loaded up. So you kind of have to decide based on the number of channels that your radio has, how many frequencies you really want to put in here. I'll just go with 20 mile radius for now. Now let's take a look at the bands that this particular radio is capable of using. Well, it's a dual band radio, the ID51, so um, we'll use two meters, 70 centimeters. Well, it doesn't have 220, so I'll uncheck that. And then I'll say okay. There we go. Not clicking hard enough, I guess. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Uh, so these are all the frequencies that it found that are 20 miles from my location uh, for UHF and VHF. I'll slide that over a little bit. So I'll just kind of scroll down a little bit here just so you can kind of see what all is out there. And so there's about 40, 47 repeaters that it found. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, I can also kind of refine this a little bit more, too. So let's uh, take a look at the types of uh, repeaters that have been selected, because this radio doesn't do all those things. Uh, like, for instance, it doesn't do Yesu. So take a look at this little Yesu entry here. As I uncheck the Yesu box, the Yesu entry will go away. And as I uncheck P25, because it doesn't do P25, as I uncheck DMR, it doesn't do DMR. Okay, so there we go. So the number of channels now just decrease. So these are just the real channels that you want. Um, now, uh, let's see. The other thing we need to do, <clears throat> uh, at this point what we're going to do is uh, give the uh, program a, a name. So this is going to be the, uh, it's going to be the ID51 data file. And so we're going to create an ID51 data file. And but before we do that, um, we need to select everything on the, on the screen by hitting the Select All, just like that. And then we go Create Data File. And now it's going to create another window up at the top. So really, this window we're looking at is something we really can't edit within. So we have to create the new window. And that is going to be uh, the window we just created off to the right here. So now we take a look at this in a little bit more detail. Uh, we'll find out that we have uh, uh, all our entries are in here. And it dropped off, I think, at 20, 27. OK. Now, the way it's organized right now is it's sorted by frequency, which may not be too, um, I don't know, the way you want to have it set. Maybe you'd rather have it set by um, uh, call sign. So if you want to do that, um, then you can go in here and go to uh, settings. Or actually, we're going to sort. That's what we're going to do. We're going to sort A to Z. And we're going to sort by, this time, by uh, name. And then we're going to go OK. Oh, you know, I didn't select everything. Hang on. I'm going to select them all. So this. And then you can go down to the bottom here and do a shift click. And then once again, we'll do the sort. And we'll sort by name and then OK. OK. So now we sorted them by um, call sign. Now, as I did the export, I just realized I could have actually sorted and had the name not be a call sign, but it could have actually had been the name. So all the names that appeared before would appear in here as names. So that's something I could redo the import, but I'll just keep going so you kind of understand what's going on here. Um, so that's a powerful feature. You can sort. Uh, some of these programs, they don't sort. I'm, I'm just amazed. Um, but, but this one does. Um, and then uh, let's say... Uh, you want to 
add a, a channel. So what you can do is um, I'll um, I'll just put something in here. I'll go insert right here. Insert a channel, and then I'll, I'll put in that McHenry frequency again that I had on that other uh, list. Actually, actually, it's already in here because I <laughs> I already added it, but I'll put it in again. Just well, actually, you know what? I'll I'll put in a different repeater. I'll put in uh, one. 45.29 and tab across and it picks up that and um, all those things will be taken care of. And once again, this is a tone and uh, frequency is 107. I don't want to get too granular. You can have so much fun with this, <laughs> you kind of get crazy. But that's an idea just to show you how you can insert something uh, in the uh, fields. Now, I, I'm not going to do a full-blown demo on every feature of the program because, you know, they've done a great job on their website showing these things. But I kind of would just highlight a few things that I think are really cool and important um, and things to make note of. Uh, do you see up in the top here, see this little guy right here? It, it has like a little tiny star. And that tells you that you have not saved it. So I'm going to make sure that I save it. And I'll go here. I'll hit Save as and then i'll get the program will pop up here and then what i like to do is i like to put it a date so i'll put in uh zero uh let's see to use the six zero six um one eight and um i'll put in test here because we're just horsing around with this so i don't ever make sure this isn't like a serious file um, and i'll hit save and now after i hit save It'll have the date and the word test. So now we know this has been saved. And that's important to keep track of your work. Make sure it's always uh, updated. Okay, now, so far I've been talking about uh, just adding frequencies. Well, as I said earlier, the main component besides this is the ability to back up the radio's uh, settings. And that is under here. And we go to uh, radio menu settings right here. And so when we bring that window up, this is going to be every little feature that's inside this uh, ID51 radio. And you can see, you can set everything the way you want them. And then, as you can see, there's a lot of settings in these radios. So if, if you do a firmware update and the, and the thing is reflashed and you lose all those settings, starting over is really a pain. And this will prevent that from uh, becoming an issue. So once you get it all set, what you can do is you can once again hit save. Now... Um, I want to show you there's a little trick you can do. And now some people may like the way this program operates as a default, and some may not. But if I hit save, it's going to save it as, see this little file right there? It says .rsf. Well, um, when you do that, it's creating a separate file just for the radio settings. Uh, and then the other file will be a separate file just for the channel settings. And when you do that, you got to manage two files, and I think that's kind of a lot of work. So I'm going to show you a little trick inside Preferences. And inside here, you can save both the radio uh, files and the radio settings as one file. And that's under Other, right there. And we just check on Keep the Menu Settings in a Single File. And then we hit Apply, and then OK. So now when I make a change in the radio settings, I do one save for the channels and the files. So I, I think that's pretty cool, and I like to uh, tell people about that if they're learning the program. Okay, now the other thing that makes RT Systems really cool is it's, um, I say the word agnostic, but they don't care about the different uh, platforms of radios that are being programmed. Uh, it, to them, it's just like one uh, platform. And so let's say I want to add another radio. So I'm going to go into here, and I can pick one of the other radio files that I've got here. So let's, uh, let's create a ID31 file, OK? And what's going to happen is you're going to get another little window that pops up over here. And this will be for an ID31. So now I spent like a lot of time, right, putting this together. So all I have to do now is go here down to the bottom, let me uh, scroll down to the, uh, do, 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 do. here we go, and I'm going to select all these channels, just like this, 
And then I'm going to do a copy, go up here and copy. And now I'm going to go over to the ID 31, which has nothing in there right now, right? And I'm going to go paste. And then when I paste everything, uh, all those channels that I created over there will now be over here. Now, what you'll notice, do you see these blanks in here? <laughs> I just realized as, as I did this, the ID 31 is only capable of UHF, and the ID 51 is a VHF UHF radio. So it actually left some blanks here for the ones that it can't program. So it, see how smart it is? The program actually says, well, you can't do those kind of channels uh, because this radio isn't capable of it. So then once again, you got another set of frequencies for another radio. Uh, see, how, see how straightforward that is? That's just neat. Um, and then uh, if you want to get exotic, uh, you can actually go in here and under File, you can do an export. So I can take this file and I can export it as a uh, uh, either a tab delimited or um, a CSV, comma separated value. And then from there, you could import it into something else. For instance, a spreadsheet, right? So you, let's say you want to work with this offline, uh, or well, not offline, but you know, on a separate uh, program well, with Excel. Um, you can export it and then import it into your Excel and then play with it there too. So there's just sorts, all sorts of uh, compatibility uh, back and forth with the uh, RT system. So they, they really do a good job with that. Okay, um, now let me, let me go back to the PowerPoint here and uh, talk about a little bit more uh, of some of the other things that I really like. Now, um, what I recommend is I recommend storing your RT system data file in the cloud. And uh, you should do the traditional installation where it actually installs it to the local computer. And, uh, and, but then when you actually do the save, do the save as, save it to the cloud. And the cloud can be whatever you prefer. I, I like Dropbox. And Dropbox actually, which is free, gives you two and a half uh, gigs. And these files are tiny, so it's, you're not going to overwhelm a Dropbox with an RT systems file. Uh, but when you uh, send it over to Dropbox, it coordinates with all your other computers that you have Dropbox installed on. And so what I'll do is I'll uh, install another copy of RT Systems on another computer. And I checked with RT Systems. They said that's acceptable. You can install uh, two copies of it, uh, one on your remote computer that you're going to take out to your car and one on your big computer where you're working with the data files. And so as I said, um, if you small, install it on a small little device like, I'll show you what I've done here. This works pretty cool. Um, as I install, install it on a little tiny uh, tablet. Sorry, it's really dirty here. <laughs> uh, but it's a, a WinBook that I got from Micro Center. Uh, it was like 100 bucks, less than that maybe. Um, and they don't sell it anymore, but this is a few years ago that I bought this. And there's other uh, inexpensive portable computers. But what makes it cool is it's got this. It's got the full-size USB connector. So now I can just drag this out to the car when I want to actually program. Um, instead of having to bring a big old laptop. Uh, and before that, you know, taking the radio, you'd have to un uninstall it out of the car, bring it in the house, hook it up to a power supply, and hook up the USB cable to the big computer in your house. And, and now, so you don't have to do that. So um, this is just a nice little tip uh, that I like to tell you about doing that. Um, and then also, I think it's a great way to back it up, too, because let's say that computer uh, that you've got RT systems on, locks up, crashes, hard drive, whatever, then you've got uh, a place that it's stored and backed up into the cloud. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's always a good idea uh, to check for updates, make sure that you install the latest updates, um, and they'll update all the other programs that are on the computer. So that's uh, automatic when you do that update if you have other RT systems uh, installed on your uh, computer. And uh, you want to make, uh, you want to kind of keep track, it's kind of hard to explain, but you want to try to keep track of where you do your updating. Um, and you want to be consistent about it. So if you're going to be doing your software updates, or not updates, but your uh, RT system updates to files, uh, maybe settings or whatever, uh, either do it in the radio or in the RT system software. And then be consistent as far as back in to the other direction so that you back that up. Because if you make changes in both places, you could potentially uh, erase and make a change that uh, is kind of unintended. And then I recommend also to save your data file as a combined file, and I showed you how to do that. Okay, 
so why should you use RT systems? Well, I'm a big proponent of American companies. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I now this is just a comment, but if you ever call somebody and, you know, they're, you can tell they're from somewhere else, you know, then you can't understand them very well. Their, their English is really poor. Um, I just ask them in a very kind way. I say, can you please transfer me to a call center in America? And, uh, and you know, they might buck at you a little bit and give you some reluctance, but uh, eventually they'll do it. Uh, it's just because I really like to keep people in America employed. And I think uh, that same goes here that, uh, you know, this is an American company with American tech support. And uh, these guys that work there, they're hams too. So they know exactly what you're doing and uh, how to make things better. Mm -hmm. Um, this program, our RT system, all the different programs, it's just so much better than Chirp and all the other programs. Um, you really do get what you pay for uh, when it comes to RT systems. The other programs, you know, they may just do channels or they may do a few radio settings, but they're not going to do everything. Um, they're just going to kind of give you um, just the basics. And, uh, and yeah, are the other ones free? Yeah. Or maybe they're just, you know, an inconsequential cost. But, um, you know, you pay a, pay a little bit more, you get a lot more product. And, and that's why I really, really like RT systems. Um, you know, and you've got the compatibility between radios and radio manufacturers. I mean, I just showed you we grabbed a file from an ID51, put it into an ID31. I could have taken that same file that I created and put it into a Kenwood radio. Um, so there's the cross-platform compatibility is really, really important. Um, the other thing is, I always say, be weary of free software because <laughs> they'll probably hit you up with an expensive cable. And that's the that's the point with uh, ICOM. Um, the ICOM software, besides it being really bad, um, you know, like for one example, they don't even av uh, avail the opportunity to do a sort. So you can't, you can't even sort things after you're done. And that's ridiculous. Um, RT Systems does. So let's say you start using that free software that ICOM gives you, and then you find out, oh, I got to get the cable. Well, the cable from ICOM is sixty dollars. So now you know you've got this free software. Now you're hooked in. You got to buy a sixty dollar cable. Oh, and I don't think they have any export capabilities either. So <laughs> once you've created all that work, you're stuck with them. You know, and um, uh, so anyways, with RT Systems, great software, cables included, ten bucks less. So it's kind of a no-brainer. So be wary of free software. Um, as I said, I mean, you get the same user interface. So let's say you get programming software from Kenwood, from ICOM, from Yesu. They're all different, you know, and now you got to learn all these different operating systems, I mean, or uh, uh, programming software. Uh, you know, it's, it's bad enough that we have to learn all the different radios if we have multiple radios. So at least with this point, you're going to be able to have one thing that is easy. Um, and, you know, I, I got to say that their software, when it comes out, it it's usually released right alongside the release of a new radio. And if not right away, it's it's, it's shortly thereafter. Um, so they really do a good job of keeping up with uh, all the new products that come out as, as a testament to the 334 radios they have. Um, and, you know, the other thing, too, they constantly track the firmware changes in the radio to make sure that the software... Uh, that they put out is compatible with the new firmware changes. Uh, so, like I said, radios don't always just in, include background enhancements. They'll also um, add features. And so when that feature change comes about, RT Systems is right there, and they'll add that feature enhancement to their software so you can make the default what it, whatever you want it to be. So they're really, really good about it. Um, and uh, lastly, um, you know, uh, just don't be cheap. <laughs> I know hams are cheap. I'll, I'll admit, you know, they like to reach in their desk drawer and grab some duct tape bailing wire and twine and pull it all together and say, look what I made for free. And they bring it to the next ham fest or their next ham meeting. And, you know, there's a time maybe to do that. But, but this is the time when to dig in your wallet and actually spend the money. And really, it's not that much when you really think about it. Because um, with RT systems, you know, if you... Um, if you keep supporting them, they're going to keep coming out with new products. Um, if, if something's free, you know, who knows if they're going to be around to support the product. You, you buy the product, um, you know, the revenue goes back into support and uh, future product development. So they, they're doing a great job with regard to that. And uh, so I really implore you and encourage you to keep buying RT Systems. And Or if you haven't tried it, give them a try. Fantastic products, fantastic support. And... Um, 
Uh, you can't go wrong. So, anyways, this concludes this YouTube video on RT Systems. Um, I hope you found it useful, and um, I uh, hope to hear from you soon. Leave some comments down below, uh, and uh, I'm also good on QRZ if you look me up, uh, K9RUF. Uh, shoot me an email if you want, and uh, we can help you out a little bit. Uh, I'm not tech support, <laughs> I'm just a user, um, but if anything I said doesn't make sense, give me a call or, or uh, shoot me an email. Um, but of course, your first uh, choice would be to call the company because they're the ones that make the, the products and uh, they provide uh, fantastic support. Thanks, everyone. Um, have a great day.